Welcome to Perspectives, New Victor 98.9. And this morning, um, Perspective is a program sponsored this morning by Kaduna State Ministry of Health. And uh, what we do on this program, sponsored program by the State Ministry of Health, is to talk about COVID-19, or coronavirus, and where we are with it. Uh, still expecting our guests from the State Ministry of Health. Uh, but again, we're holding forth for them until, you know, one of them shows up. The program must continue, and, and so let's take ourselves back to when it all started and where we are with it. We call it so many deaths and so many people, you know, infected with the disease today. It's a world over, and um, could Nigeria, Kaduna State, is not exempted from what is happening now. We, we'll be going back to the protocols and uh, how much we've kept to the protocols. You know, there are things that were, we were told to avoid and uh, to keep us safe from uh, COVID-19. And these are, you know, um, keeping social distances, wearing the face mask and um, sneezing or coughing on our bent elbows. And, of course, uh, using the hand sanitizers. Uh, how much of it are we doing now? And uh, are we all relaxed about um, the situation and that we might just not, you know, it's just a hoax and uh, cannot, you know, uh, reach us. But again, now... Uh, the facts, you know, that we're getting all over is that coronavirus is still real. We do know today that Russia has come out to say that it has, you know, come up with um, the virus, you know, the 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 vaccine. the vaccine, you know, against coronavirus. But again, this is not world over. This is Russia, you know, and again, have to wait for confirmation uh, from the. World Health Organization and other bodies before we can really say that uh, Russia uh, has come out with the vaccine. So, with my colleague um, Prince Highness um, Henacho, we'll be discussing about uh, uh, how we are with COVID-19 here uh, in Nigeria and back home in Kaduna State. Highness, good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me, Tony. Yes, um, again, um, I, I see people around, I see, you know, I go to places and uh, I watch, you know, the TV and I hear radio talks and I read in the newspapers that uh, coronavirus, you know, are we saying it's not with us again? And so uh, that's the reason why we've also rela we're also relaxed about uh, keeping the protocols. Well, we're saying that people uh, are, you know, the fact that government is saying let's reopen, you know, is making people a little more, uh, you know, relaxed and, and thinking, oh, well, we can just move around. And But the truth is, uh, people are still contracting the virus. Um, we're closing the 50,000 mark. And almost 1,000 people have died from the virus, and that's no small number. One almost um, 900 and something people died confirmed already, you know, uh, you know, casualty figures or fatality figures, and that's that's very serious. Um, you know, another thing is, um, hearing that the, the markets in Kajina would be open re reopening soon, the protocols have been set for that, and um, you know, that's another aspect people have been saying, oh, um campaigns and political campaigns are on and all that stuff are planning to reopen schools why don't we open the markets as well but the truth is the market is one place where you can really control the crowd and you can really control what goes on there uh, we're seeing what the state government is doing with you know setting and making sure that the safety protocols are observed at the markets you know uh providing hand washing um uh, what do you call it um uh, solutions for for people's safety are the markets and i know we hope that you know as the markets reopen people would not further take you know these actions for granted you know because um as it is from the day that the you know people were allowed to go out and go to the worship centers and do all this regular stuff that they used to do it seemed like a lot of people felt that the virus was suspended 
the virus has not been suspended. It's still very active. There hasn't been any, um, you know, uh, vaccines yet, aside from the fact that Russia, can, you know, uh, and so some people are saying, uh, for some of us, we're thinking, you know, Russia is just trying to, Vladimir is just trying to, you know, make make himself and his nation look like, the, you know, they are more active than other, other nations. Um, the trials haven't even been completed yet in Russia, but then the, the scaling up, uh, the, the trials and testings and he has said that his daughter has taken the vaccine and she's well aside from just a little fever that she had afterwards that she's well and you know and stuff but other buddies across the world have been satisfied certified this so we're still not sure of any anything yet we can't we can't even begin to gamble that now that's this is not the time to gamble and say oh there's a vaccine somewhere no that's not guaranteed there's no approval from you know the world health organization which is you know the body that certifies any you know, um, uh, treatment regimen or, or for for medical uh, uh, practitioners so we can't even rely on that now people need to still see that the virus is very active and the fact that you go out and come back the fact that the roads are open does not mean that the virus has gone to sleep oh okay I, I, there's something you know this is you know coming from all over the world mm -hmm. now can we say uh, of course now you're inclusive can we say that the panic the mm. panic that came with coronavirus, you know, is about um, we're done with it, or we we all we, we, it is it has stabilized so much that uh, we, the fear of coronavirus may not just be there. Again. Well, I, I I'm seeing a situation where people are beginning to accept that this may be something that we would have to live with. So um, instead of just continuing to panic and fear, which is when what the you know the world as organization has been pushing, instead of you know panicking and fear and being afraid or being scared we should begin to accept and look for w possible ways to live with this now you see people accepting you know wearing the face mask just you know um when they go out you know washing their hands regularly if if we can adopt those method methods as you know um our lifestyle this new lifestyle or the new norms then maybe we don't need to be afraid we don't need to be afraid if we can actually take precaution you know what people are what, what we are afraid of is people not even taking precautions in the first place um schools are reopening federal government is saying we need for people to understand that the safety measures um even as flight operations resume uh, we've seen the senate calling for you know sanitation of the airport and you know ensuring that these safety protocols are observed strictly you know that's what we we're, we're, we're concerned about now we're not about you know getting people you know you know fretting or being afraid of of the virus we're actually telling people to be more cautious and you know just observe the protocols so that we can all be safe you know you see what happened in america where you know as the reopen people began to go to the beaches and swimming and all that stuff you know setting aside the protocols that were set in place that's the problem that they had and the numbers began to spike up again if we um i love what the um the ptf chairman said yesterday where he said um uh, people should not take it for granted anymore um people need to the, the fact that the numbers were recording lower numbers doesn't mean that you know the virus has we've overcome the virus it just means that maybe more people are less people are testing now and it just means that maybe um people are taking more precaution now you know so we need to continue if we're taking precaution we need to continue in that in that line uh, also looking at the fact that he said 20 just 20 percent of local governments in nigeria have reported cases or you know have uh, you know been testing and reporting cases that's actually scary we have about 774 local governments in nigeria and just about 20 percent of that number has reported cases it means that it's either people are not testing in the other local governments or i mean <laughs> we don't even know yeah yeah, yeah i'll take you on that um, uh, reporting cases mm -hmm. is it a situation that um uh, Yes, the numbers are going down because uh, people have not been reporting or that, again, people have not been coming out for, for the tax. You know, I'm, go I'm going to take this up. Um, I I I'm going to say this. Um, people actually taking the numbers for granted and saying, oh, N NCDC just gives us numbers and they just put out. I'm, for one, I'm going to say this, that N the N NCDC is not doing as much as, sh as it should. If it was doing as much as it should, we would have had the numbers higher because... Um, I did. I did. I, I you know. I, I did this um, investigation, and I discovered that when people go to test and they put down names of people who they feel they have come in contact with, 
Then CDC does, especially in Kaduna here, I'm going to say that, um, they don't as much as follow up as much as they should. Because you see that days and weeks have passed by and not even a call goes through to those people. So it, it means that maybe they have too much numbers to take care of or too many people to attend to. And, and then it allows for, you know, weeks and months to go by before they can reach the other people, you know, behind. And which means that if, for instance, I, uh, I report a, or I test positive or I go to test today and I say, okay, and before the test result comes out, these are the people that I may have come in contact with and I need you to follow up on them. And my test result doesn't come out in, in maybe in the next 48 hours. It means that I would continue to infect more people and the people that I have, you know, had contact with would continue to infect more people. You see, so if um, I had the virus, more, more people would have contracted the virus for me and more and more and more people would have you know so people need to be more careful people just feel like the ncdc just puts out numbers the numbers that they put out is numbers that they have confirmed so if they they were able to confirm uh, one person and that that one person had, in, had infected 40 other people or 20 other people and they were only able to track five of those people 15 other people are still in the society community you know spreading the virus so people need to be more cautious and, you know, pay attention to what's going on rather than just say, oh, the NCDC scores, because that's what they call it now, mm. NCDC scores. So, so, so COVID-19 is still here with us? It's very, very, very much here. Okay, right again, I, I think you, this time to, uh, to America, to, to France, uh, just watching the news yesterday in France, you know, in, particular, mm. uh, in the beaches, of course, we saw, I saw a situation where the beaches, you know, the beach was full, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and there were no social distances, uh, there, there were no wearing of the mask, mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you just could begin to wonder what is happening to countries that we copy from. And then in the United States of America, again, a particular church had its attendance, you know, to, to you know, so attendance was maximum capacity. And, and the bishop of the church or the pastor of the church was coming out to tell uh, CNN that, uh, well, uh, God takes care of all. You know, it's God first. And uh, so is this giving, you know, a rather, you know, confusing uh, issue about COVID-19 and, and its reality. Well, the fact that people, more people are taking it for granted should even worry us more because um, these are people who would go out and we don't even know where they've gone to and then they come back to us. Now, um, the World Health Organization has said that um, the virus is contracted from droplets and uh, that it could even be airborne, which means that if you stay within the same distance or, you know, the same a confined space with, with people, or someone who has the virus you're liable to contract the virus and also you know how the beach is when people go to the beach they spit they they sneeze mm. they do all that mm. in the water mm. and sometimes people spit in the water and mm. all the people it gets into other people's mouths and nostrils and and that's how the virus spreads so when this when these nations are reporting more numbers you just see where it's coming from because they're not taking precaution as much all right we as a continent i would say have you know been able to contain it because we saw um firsthand what it could do especially from countries like italy and france when it got to those countries before it even became pronounced in in africa or in nigeria we had seen the way that it went and you know and that helped us to prepare even better and you know institute the lockdowns and all that stuff earlier than they did because initially these countries took it for granted when they started to report cases you know and judging by that we've seen that over the space of four or five months we've recorded close to fifty thousand people officially in nigeria and like i said that number to me is not even close to the number of people who have actually contracted the virus who may have recovered you know because um, the fact that we take anti-malaria every day in Nigeria, we know when people fall sick, they just go and treat themselves. We do self-medication. Nobody wants to even go to test and, you know, test themselves. That's one other thing. So a lot of people may have even recovered from the virus. Like the World Health Organization says, it may take an average person who has a good immune system, you know, five days to recover. And a lot of people may have gone through this and just felt, oh, it's just a regular ma ma malaria, mm. you know. Mm. And so more and more people may have been infected by the virus and have recovered. And they're still not taking precaution because um, there's not been any clear case of, say, if you've been infected before, then you may not be able to, you may not be infected again. There's also cases of reinfection 
We need to be careful about that. Okay, I still take you. You say hold on. You know, stay with the United States of America. They also a debate. Or still, still considering going back. You know, for a second. Uh, you know. Um, uh, lockdown, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. and then we have a situation back home that uh, when the lockdown was at its peak, uh, we were talking about palliatives and all of that. You mm -hmm. know that uh, people have to be given all of these to cushion the effect mm -hmm. of uh, the lockdown. But one thing that came out of the protocols that have been you know put on coronavirus yeah. is that uh, social distancing and um, you know washing of hands and wearing the face mask. Another thing was added: uh, eating, having a good diet very important that was very, you know very, part of it very, 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 very important, important. Yeah. and i come to think about you know nigeria and the average nigeria and the low bottom nigeria and uh when we're talking about diet mm. and uh some people can't even some people are not cannot really say they eat three square meals now before the virus the more wrong of the society two square two meals two meals, meals you know before it came <laughs> and then i'm just checking out on how this would what effect it would let's, take let's start off for the fact that nigeria is a nation that's first of all is fighting malnutrition mm. as a as an epidemic yes it is you know yes. we're fighting malnutrition mm. people are malnourished all over the place mm. And we don't even we can't some people people cannot even afford fruits, mm. let alone you know other stuff that can boost their immune mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, so if we're talking about people not even being able to eat balanced diets in this country, shouldn't we be concerned about our health some more? Because th this virus is something uh, is one that has been, has been said to um, you know deplete your immune system, and if you have a good immunity or immune you know, if your immune system is good, mm. you would may be able to fight the virus even faster. Now, people are not eating good food. People don't have money to, in case they, 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 they contract the virus, they don't even have money to treat themselves. Mm. They don't have money to buy foods to boost their immunity. Isn't it better for us to actually take precaution? I was watching on CNN this morning and I saw that um, there's another wave of, um, of um, food bank giveaways. This is America we're talking about. Mm. And people are giving, I mean, being given food. People were almost protesting the fact that the six hundred dollars, um, you know, palliative was, was was stopped. Now some states are beginning to give um, give away food from mm. the food banks. Mm. This is a nation that has food banks. Nigeria doesn't have food banks. We mm. don't have food banks. Mm. I don't know. I don't know of any. If we ha if we do have, I don't know, uh, but I don't know uh, where the Kaduna State Food Bank is. Where <laughs> you know, remember the f the past few months ago, uh, the last few months where the lockdown was was really hot and uh, the state government had to give food. See what people did, the fight and everything. That's it wasn't it wasn't peaceful. This is this is a nation that I mean, we live in a country or in a state where people cannot even uh, coordinate themselves. To say let's manage the stuff that we're getting from government so if we go back to another lockdown considering the fact that we haven't even stood up on our feet yet so people who um you know lost their businesses who uh couldn't go to work teachers uh, private school teachers are still yearning and crying you know and, and and yelling we need to take care of this if we go back to another phase of lockdown it's going to be very it's going to be it's going to tell a whole lot on us because businesses haven't recovered people businesses haven't picked up yet so um it means that for the whole year or even running to next year we're still going to have people crying and begging and yelling and if the virus eventually catches with those people or catches up with those people it would mean that you know the cases may become fatal because you don't have a strong immune system because you haven't been eating well mm. So we need, I, I would keep emphasizing that we need to be a little more careful where we go, the way that we interact with people. The face mask isn't so much something that if you're in your house, you can afford not to wear it. If you're going out, put it, put it on, you know, we need to begin to live like, observe social distance. It's not so difficult, you know, shaking of hands is something that I like. I like the fact that we're getting to that point where, I mean, rather than shake hands now, people just bone fist and, mm. and, and, you know, and it's a little safer than, you know, the, the hogs and the shaking of hands that we used to do so we just need to begin to pay more attention if america is thinking about going and you know how people have said um we have a copy and paste government in mm. africa mm. where whatever is happening in, in the western world we just copy and paste. if america and france and the rest of them go back to another wave of lockdowns it means that apparently we would also be shutting down again so mm. we need to we need to really be careful now so much uh so much that we put on government in, in all of this we saw when the when we 
came down with the first lockdown so much reliance on government mm -hmm. and it, that put a lot of you know a lot of burden on government and of course on governance too uh, so why is there so much you know weight of all of this being put on government well um it's not something that's peculiar to nigeria even america in america the government is bearing the brunt of it i mean <laughs> but, but, but again, again people, when we are, talk about america there yeah, there was a lot of community service there was there was a lot of you know talking to that that we show uh, man's humanity to man mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. was put in place mm -hmm. uh, and so for america it was not well, a thing. well you could say that because they have a culture of charity they believe in charity and people believe in you know looking out for each other we don't have that culture here we we we, we believe so much in oh we, nice we, we don't have now yeah, but don't have, is this something but, that we used to have well, i mean well, yeah, we, we, have we, used to, we used to have yes but, but um also trying to copy you know or you know what's the word for it now um yes copy what the western world used to be like or you, it is we did not copy well because these are people who believe in feeling the pain of all the for all the of other people and reaching out to them right um we used to have communal living mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff before mm -hmm. now but we, we've now built fences across our houses we don't even know what the next man looks like um i, I had a neighbor for about two years and i didn't know him you know i knew his kids but i didn't know him because before i before he comes out i've gone to work and then by the time i'm coming back i'm indoors i, I, I didn't know him until um the lockdown mm. you know so we need to start to leave like a community again and be able to give arms to people and look out for people and say oh this guy isn't doing so well i need to reach out to him and find a way to you know make things better for what's him. this word missing trust I am talking about to trust your government to say yes. You, you're talking to a or you're looking at a government that really cares about. In people. general, Nigerians <laughs> have lost trust for their governments a long time ago. Nigerians lost trust for you know when the government says we're going to do this, people just say oh well, you know um, when 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 they do them, you know and people don't even pay attention to, and 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 that 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 behooves on us as Nigerians. We need to be able to hold government accountable for what they say and what they promise right um i will see what's happening in in lebanon you know mm. this uh, stuff that most of the things that happened in lebanon were, were, were things that even the governments could not control at the time you know but people are and the government had to be sacked and the government had to be, i mean the government was responsible enough to mm. resign and say you know what we're going away because we feel like we, we feel like we have failed you and even at that the people are still you know the people the protest is still going on i don't want to i don't want to talk about all mm. that now because you know that's the whole you know level of politics that mm. we probably may not be talking about and at, at this show um coronavirus is the center of a conversation today yep. so yep. but nigerians need to be able need to get to the point where they're saying you know what if governments governments across the world are doing this we need to have a government that is responsible for us that you know that we can hold accountable and that goes that goes beyond um just coming out to talk it 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 means going to the polls and being responsible for who your leaders become or you know who become your leader um going to the polls to say this is the man that we trust and this is the man we believe is going, is going to work for us and we would do that you see what's going on in edo state mm. Mm. um people are people people don't even know who to vote because it just feels like the two sides of the same coin you know so we need to be able to be bring our own bring up people who we feel can serve us that's very important nigerians need to understand that okay well uh, the program is perspective this morning and um a sponsor kadun state ministry of health we can't have any of the official here with us to discuss on um you know coronavirus and its reality we, with us uh, we, we're talking about the facts you know of coronavirus and of course uh putting it you know on um, there's so many things that are happening around us are people really relaxed on you know keeping to the protocols and of course the protocols are you know safety measures that have been put in place and uh, we're told to observe these measures and it will keep us safe and again well, the second part of it when we come back we'll involve you the audience um let's get you know to know what is happening around you? How real are we with uh, keeping to the protocols of the coronavirus? Come back after this break. Invicta FM. 
welcome back. Here's the program perspectives this morning. And, uh, uh, coming from uh, Goodman State Minister of Health, our sponsor. And of course, we're looking at um, COVID-19, facts about COVID-19. We're saying here that it's still real, it's with us. And of course, we're saying that uh, the protocols too must be observed. Uh, again, with my colleague, we're saying that um, a lot of people have relaxed, you know, thinking or maybe feeling that uh, COVID-19 may just, you know, have uh, faded off. And so we begin to live our lives as, uh, as normal. Again, I, you know, I just called the word normal. But again, uh, with COVID-19, we're in a new in normal. normal. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> what, the new normal, uh, normal. What, what, what changed from the normal? Yeah, that we, the we normal have? is that we need, we have to start to wear face masks. Mm. We need to wash hands regularly. Mm. We need to stop the hug and mm. the handshake culture. Mm. We need to change some of the things. Um, if you, if it's not necessary, don't be out there. Don't go out. You know, work from home if it's possible. You know, those are the new normals. Mm. Now, you know, I was I, a lot of people have been taking courses online. Um, yesterday i was on one i was taking one and you know for the most part we kept saying um bad audio bad audio network and um, please restart, the <laughs> restart. Mm, mm. and and that's that's where we are because before now we didn't put the infrastructure in place for to to have this kind of you know um for this mm. kind of emergencies um now we're dealing with we're dealing with oh bad network there bad network this um people can take classes online students are at home and people who are supposed to be graduating by november or you know october will still have to be in school not even know when when they would resume so um we that's our new normal that's that's where we are now we need to start to leave we will find ways to live with the virus if a vaccine is found fine but if not we need to life has to go on you know and that's the i mean that's the new uh, new normal again how this affects uh government you know responsibilities the people and of course um, carrying out matters of uh, governance at this time should there be some sort of sympathy for government because it it uh, it, it has had to change from uh, some of the things that would be its mm. priorities mm. moving on to you know the healthcare sector yeah. which is top on the priori priority list now and so gov government sympathy towards government at this time yeah um let's even start from the fact that the budget had to be you know reviewed, reviewed and, and yes. all that stuff mm. that's that, that means a lot, a lot of infrastructure that we probably would have had you know would have to start the borrowings and all it's probably most of it is cuz you know stuff had to change monies had to be appropriated to all the things especially when it came to health care um but my concern is the fact that we haven't seen um in china when the coronavirus broke out a hospital was built within 24 hours or 48 hours yeah mm. you know we saw that we haven't seen state governments building new hospitals you know and feeding those hospitals with the kind of you know equipment that's required for us to have a good healthcare system right we haven't seen even the federal government saying oh we're commissioning this new hospital it's been about five months now we or, or four months we haven't seen the federal government saying oh we're commissioning this hospital is new i mean it has the facility to take care to take care of um covid 19 patients we're still looking at you know the united states giving us the united states just donated um mm. you know 20 ventilators to nigeria mm, mm. 20 in the whole of nigeria no 20 or 200 is it 20 or 200 200 200 mm, 200 mm. ventilators yes well for the whole of nigeria no, but for the whole of nigeria yes. think about mm, that mm, how many hospitals do we have in nigeria that's true, that's i mean true. in kaduna state alone mm. how many people do we have in kaduna state alone we have close to 10 over 10 million people yes, in kaduna state yes, yes. if we had 200 ventilators in kaduna state alone it wouldn't even mm. be enough mm. so we're looking at that we're seeing that government on its part is not doing stuff that people are seeing and saying oh thank you for for doing this we we'll see what you're doing you know um governor como in in the united states was one governor that people across the world were applauding and saying oh we we'll see what you're doing mm. you know we we'll see how you're fighting coronavirus if the government is doing this people are seeing people are watching people are want to see you know what we're doing rather than just sit down and have ptf meetings every day we want to see you take us on tours show us oh this is what we're doing these are the equipments we bought with this money this is what we're building at the moment Mm. you know and so much money has come for coronavirus in there's a lot of donations mm. from the united nations from everywhere there's been donations to nigeria and we're not seeing what these monies are doing so you know that's that's the reason people cannot trust government mm. because people need to see the reason people doubted the coronavirus was in nigeria existed in nigeria was because they were not seeing 
seeing they say he's believing mm. we need to start to see some more we need to see government putting in place these fr- uh, you know structures putting in place the infrastructure that would tell us yes we're doing we're doing well with the fight against COVID-19 but if I'm sick and I still cannot go to the hospital because I'm afraid you know the doctors don't even have enough PPEs to take care of me then that's a problem we saw doctors complaining about shortage of PPEs we're not even talking about structures where they would work we're talking about the basic equipment that they need to protect themselves so that they can treat other people we're not talking about the medication we're talking about protective gear and we don't even have that in sufficient amount we're not talking ventilators you know for for people who have you know chronic uh, serious serious sy- symptoms so we need government government needs to be a little more proactive and when i say proactive i mean that in every sense because we cannot wait for something to happen before we begin to take measures or take action like we're doing now mm. covid 19 first hit us before we started to think about you know um uh finding ways to make sure that the airports are safe for people you know finding ways for to make sure that people can go to school if we had put in place the structures in the, you know ahead of time it wasn't a problem for us to graduate students people people have been graduating in, in the us and other countries because before now students could actually take online class, classes so if we had put in place all of these proactive government is what we need in this nation we cannot continue with the fire brigade approach and fix things when they're broken we need to be able to forecast and see oh in the next five years this is a possible um you know uh, outcome or this is where we possibly may be and so we need to start to put in place um you know effects that can cushion or i mean measures that can cushion the effects of these kind of impacts we need that you know we need that now so for for us uh, you know covid 19 is real and Still basic real. facts you know Still about it real. that uh the protocols must you know we must observe the protocols. And I would say that we need to be more careful now because um, if with international flights opening up, people returning to the country, people, you know, coming from different parts of the world, um, we may be expecting. That's why I said we need to start to be proactive. What are we doing to ensure that when people come into this country, we are able to certify that they are free of the virus before they can enter, you know, the populace or enter and get into the streets? what do we do what are we doing are we putting those things in place um we were talking about uh, testing kits and we're saying there's insufficient test kits in nigeria when people begin to fly into this country we, we, would we have enough test kits to test these people to verify if they're safe or not would we have facilities to quarantine them when they come in do we have all that stuff i mean we need to start to put all that in place lagos state government was complaining at some point I mean, the whole place is saturated. There's people. There's no space for people to, you know, to to um, or what, you, what do you call it, um, self isolate or even um, be quarantined. So we need to start to look at these kind of things and put them in place before before um, even the flight operations commence. So, so just before you know, we get our lines opened, uh, Lagos epicenter of uh, the this virus, and of course, uh, coming back home to Kaduna State. What has been different about how Kaduna State, how we've handled the situation in Kaduna State, so much that uh, we're not, you know, in the league of states uh, with well, so um, much numbers? We must commend the state governor for his proactive, you know, uh, response to um, the COVID-19. Even before any case was announced in Kaduna State, we are ready. We're one of the first states to initiate the lockdowns. And um, even when he announced himself as the index case in Kaduna State, we saw that we were able to contain and uh, and you know those swift reactions to testing and um you know getting people to self-isolate if they had you know they had and all that stuff really helped us um i I i'm thinking that one of the other problems that we had or that we have right now is the fact that we're very we're in close proximity to the states that or and the federal capital territory and kind of state at the time um, people were still moving into Kajina State from Kano. People were still coming in from Abuja, and that has continued. So if we continue to, if we see the numbers rising, it's probably not because we had these cases in Kajunas, because people shipped the virus in to Kajuna, and we need 
we really 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 need to start to check that our, our entry points and exit points what are we doing what do we do we saw the government the governor at some point decide to lift the barricades and say you know what if the security agents are not doing as much work as they should be as they should then why do we have them let's just let them let you know let the doors open for people to come in that's that step initial that initial step of like shutting down kaduna was one of the best things that the governor uh governor did and we saw that uh we've seen other states come to copy what kaduna state did there's a there's a um five pillar uh response and all that stuff the strategies put in place by the state government i mean even before um there was uh, the ptf set up the kaduna state already had you know a committee working to you know fight the virus uh, or you know or protect people from contracting the virus there was all that response was was what really made kaduna or as what has helped kaduna stay the way that it, that it is okay yeah um, time we get you know to you out there and uh get your thoughts too about um the reality of covid 19 in kaduna state and um what you think it's been now you, you can also tell us about you know what may be happening in your surroundings you know so that we get to know uh how to tackle this issue but but the basic fact about it is that coronavirus is real the protocols must be kept you know must be observed uh, to keep us safe and when people talk about uh, staying safe or staying at home to be safe well some of these protocols may be seen as tall orders but again they are all you know to, for for our safety and so uh, call us on numbers 081 40,989 zero eight one forty thousand nine eight nine or zero seven zero eight seven eight hundred nine eight nine zero seven zero eight seven eight hundred nine eight nine your calls now hello good morning uh good morning mr Tuyanabi. good morning good morning Hannes and all in the studio good morning good morning my name is musabala all right musabala let's hear you uh COVID 19 is real uh, but I want to congratulate the entire citizen of the whole world that uh, Russia finally got the vaccine yesterday and uh, the daughter of President Putin has uh, even the first person to start it, uh, testing it and she's feeling okay. So I think that is a very good example when his daughter uh, happened to be the one that has started. That is true. Uh, we have to take all measures that we're supposed to take in Nigeria and at the same time let us be our brother's keepers. We have to help ourselves. Not when I come on radio and I said, uh, I'm sitting in my garden in my house, but every day I complain that I've not received a palliative. I think it's a wrong approach. And at the same time, I want to believe the Nigerian government have done something. It would not be fair to say that they have done nothing. We have seen structures on the ground all over. There are challenges, of course, and there are a lot of uh, issues that is mind-boggling, like... Uh, the way we saw some pictures in some of the isolation centers when people were just eating or taking on the according to them only uh, vitamin c i think uh, the government need to sit up but uh, it's not fair to say that the government did nothing a lot have been done for simple even though it never reached where we expected it to reach in some states uh, we have to say they have done something but we need more but there are a lot of challenges and in the area of uh, borrowing I think people that don't want Nigeria to borrow, they should tell us how do we go about it. We should be mindful of the looting that crippled Nigeria for long. Not borrowing to put. The borrowing is not a problem. Expose the government if they have borrowed to buy private jet or jewelries of millions of dollars or they diverted it to their pocket. Expose them or all for them. But by the time that they say they borrow to construct Second Niger Bridge. We've seen Second Niger Bridge in reality. We've seen work all over the country. So borrowing is not a problem. It's how you spend the borrowing. The most, the best country in the whole world is the most indebted country in the United States of America. In Nigeria, the economy, the, the best uh, state, Lagos, is the most indebted state. So please, we should give a positive uh, analysis of what we have. May God continue to save our country, prevent us from corrupt people and their leaders anywhere they come from plus their agents good morning sir thank good morning, you Nigeria. all right Musabala, thank you we got you on that still with your calls hello good morning okay we'll, we'll say taking your calls good morning hello good morning yeah 
Good morning, Mr. Toya, and good morning, Highness. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Fresh. All right, Fresh. Yeah, you see, on the very issue you are raising is truly important. So, for somebody like you, yeah, I believe that there is confidence in But the way we are doing and the way the issue is being carried in this country is so unfortunate. Because if you say there is confidence and we should uh, maintain social distance, and yet elections and campaign elections are still going on where we see pictures of uh, campaigns, no social distance. They do we saw it where people were choked in one place, rallying, supporting one candidate or the other. And you see we should maintain social distance because you are a you are holding the country, you are passing through it, and social distance is not maintained, and other things. Then, how do you now preach to people that they should maintain social distance? While we see in your campaigns and rallies, social distances are not being maintained. That's one question. And so, let the government be truthful in the fight against COVID 19. That is one. Two, let the government also, in as much as I commend them on the issue of COVID 19, let them also improve on the area of insecurity because we cannot be talking about COVID 19. Where we just saw that this on your calculation, I made this morning less than a thousand uh, people have been killed. But if you calculate from the time the fight against COVID 19 started to today, people that have died as a result of insecurity is more than that figure. So I think the government should also improve on the area of insecurity. People are dying. I don't want to call it region, I don't want to call it state, but we all know where the people have been killed. So let the government fully improve on this area also. Thank okay. you. All right, Fresh, Mr. Fresh, got you. Okay, we'll take one more and then uh, we'll go on to the discussion. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Buba Uma. Okay, Buba Uma. Now, sir, uh, most of the time, uh, uh, head officials and the United government are underestimating the people of uh, United States. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, the pandemic, I say, now, it, most of the time, government are striving on lockdown. There are some steps which are taken by where the origin of the pandemic now, these people are not taking the test. Now, the, 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 the case you made mention, like test kit. It's possible you test somebody, all of a sudden, you may be test a test kit before the result will come out. So, what we were saying is, if government tried on lockdown, we expect government to be fumigating trees, making sure it's working. And... One thing in the Kaduna government and indeed yet workers in Kaduna have to know is that if behaviorally and attitudinal change have not compelled people to follow what you wanted people to follow, it means you check on yourself. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, good one more. Thank you. All okay. right. All right. Um, call us there. Um, uh, I yeah. Musa Abala talked about um giving government a break too in all of these that government is doing all he can but i recall that uh, you were saying uh, talking about proactiveness of government yeah in all um, of these. can we really give government a break can we, can we cut government slacks so anywhere mm. in the world i don't see where governments have been caught slack i mean mm. that's the reason we put you there we put you there so that we can we can hold you accountable we can blame something on you uh, you know uh, if things are not working right we know where to go because you are one of the other people that we put there to make things work for us and uh speaking of speaking of um you know infrastructure i am looking at the COVID 19 from the period that COVID 19 broke out in nigeria we haven't we haven't really really seen um uh, what do you call it substantive uh, development in our health sector what if another what if another disease breaks out um i was reading about um you know the money is allocated the fact the cbn was going to do out for um research and they're saying that about 90 billion naira has been mm. you know requested for uh you know covid 19 research 
do we have money for other you know researches how why why do we even have people researching to find permanent cure to malaria in nigeria why are we why are we looking for you know doing research to uh, provide vaccines for malaria in nigeria i mean nigerian vaccines why are we not looking at that that's what we that's what we talk what we, what we mean by being proactive if we're looking at saying and saying oh there may be another outbreak of another thing somewhere in the world you know that could affect us somebody said something a professor said something yesterday and said who would ever believe that when the virus for first broke out when we saw a video of people falling down in china who would ever ever believe that it would have have you know it would lead to the sacking of people in nigeria people losing their jobs in nigeria who would ever believe that but in less than three months or four months from when it broke out in china more people have lost their jobs in nigeria today so what do we do to make sure that in the future when things like this happen it doesn't hit us this hard what are we doing to prevent malnutrition so that viruses would not even attack people and bring them down you know these are the kind of things we're looking at put infrastructure in place that would help you know um even unforeseen circumstances when they come. The, the whole the world is not celebrating in Russia yet for its uh, exactly. discovery yeah. of uh, a vaccine for mm. coronavirus, and so that again will keep that. Uh, yes, um, that's that. I don't know. I, I for some reason I don't want people until those vaccines are proven to be you know effective in other places. I don't want for us to begin to celebrate. No, mm. and it's not hurry yet. Mm. Um, uh, Russia is in the race for certain reasons. Mm. Other countries are there, but at, at least they're in the race to providing vaccines. Mm. Why are we not in that race? You know, championing the cause and saying, okay, we have what we have this Nigerian vaccine in trial in Nigeria. I mean, we're still waiting for um, the World Health Organization to allocate vaccines for trials in nigeria mm. not even the actual vaccines you know could, could, we, could we also see this as family responsibility too i mean the, the fight against coronavirus i'm mm. talking about responsibility of parents to their children like uh, we've talked about protocols to be observed are parents really enforcing it or you know seeing to it that you know at home the children do all of this talking about parental care you know i like i like the fact that you raised that because um children children emulate and copy what they see mm. um how does a child copy what they haven't seen if a parent doesn't even believe mm. that it's covid 19 or they don't even believe that they need to take precaution against covid 19 how would the children ever learn that we need to take these campaigns to people and make them believe this has been six months and some people still doubt mm. it mm. it's scary you know people need to begin to take this thing a little more serious and that way the children can actually see you know there's this um um my my landlady has a grand grandson very young chap is about three or four years old he would not shake you he would not come close to you he would not i mean he's so conscious about covid19 because his family mm. he sees his mom and the way that his mom takes it she takes it seriously so he would mm. not even if you try to shake him he'd say no no social distancing mm. he's just four years old mm. but because of what he has seen around him you know the, the way that my, my house um, the way that everybody you know keeps to themselves and says oh no you have to observe your distance if mm. we're talking even in the compound you have to observe a certain distance between the next man and he's been taking that when he plays with kids he makes sure he doesn't he rides his bicycle alone he plays football and you're there and he's here and they would tell him you touch the ball and this guy touch, touches the ball he says well i'm going to wash my hand you know that's a kid who understands who has been see, he has been seeing it mm. and so he's he's, take, he's taking precaution because of what he has seen if he least if he, that kid, same kid lived in the community where or in a family where the parents were not you know being mm. serious with mm. it he would never take it seriously mm. okay uh, we still can take one one can we yes, can we, we take, take one, one call? call one last call one last call okay hello good morning hello good morning sir good morning and good morning to your guest. Good morning. Not a guest. Yeah, I'm from the government. Mm. So I think you will have to thank the Canada State government and even your studio there for putting us, that enlightening us on this uh, coronavirus. I think it's a very good one. But I'm worried that uh, if it's hard what happened with APC uh, rally in Edo State, 
there was no social distance at all. I think the government should be sincere with herself in doing things. Not that if you come to the government, you do whatever they like, but if you come to the ordinary people like us, they will begin to enforce the uh, distance, uh, space distance. So we are pleading seriously also with the Canada State government to consider the opening most of this market. Because if you come like the market now, some days you will see a people even outside there are even more than the people who used to be inside the market so i don't know what measure the government is putting in place to say that at least if this is the claim from the radio we are being enlightened and and sure definitely like the kekena thing from sabo to all this era it's of current three or four the car only two but though the charges is increased so a lot of people are being enlightened now so i don't know what the government is doing the federal government itself what happened at the door and they are going to be a relation how are they going to portray this Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Comrade Gabriel. All right, that will just be about the size of it on the program. Uh, last line on um, keeping our Well, for in. us in Kaduna State, uh, the markets are, are maybe opening anytime soon, and we need to take precaution. We need to, you know, uh, I don't see people buying hand sanitizers as they used to. We need to keep all that, um, make sure that we have all that face masks and all that when we go to the markets. And, um, COVID-19 is still very available. Let's do the best that we can to stay safe and keep our neighbors and communities safe perspectives for today. We'll come back with the program tomorrow, same time, same station. Good morning.